and uh, a lot of the English beat groups were in real trouble. Um, and you could tell, radically tell the difference. I mean, I defy any, most 90% of the white bands that try and play Chuck Berry music don't get it. Right. The rhythm, the way it winds and twirls around. And there was a sort of that backbeat thing. I mean, last night, um, Hubert Sunlin had a couple of amazing moments where he dragged his, his fingers down the bottom E string. And he gave us a bit of that Howlin' Wolf backbeat thing. And that's what I wanted. And I wanted to get as close to Sun House and Charlie Patton and that sort of deal. And of course, my parents were horrified. <laughs> because, <laughs> you know, first of all, it's, it sounds weird. And secondly, it's from people who don't live around the corner, right. you know. Right. So they cut the plug off my record player. And uh, <laughs> did, they, did they literally cut the plug off the record player? Yeah, they did, yeah. And That's they stopped you from taking guitar lessons, didn't they? Yeah, I had one lesson. <laughs> I know, isn't it silly? I mean, when you think about it, this is really silly, but I mean, I learned to play Dance On by the Shadows in one lesson, and then it was all over. <laughs> well, luckily, the singing thing worked out pretty yeah. well. <laughs> and, and, uh, and I met a couple of decent guitarists on the way as well. <laughs> yeah. They don't have my sort of uh, blues finesse, but then. <laughs> That primitive, untutored thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, now so, so, but as a young man, you begin playing in different groups and supporting some of, you know, I don't know, the Mercy Beats or the yeah. Searchers or whoever you were supporting. Gene Vincent. Gene Vincent. How old were you when you opened for Gene Vincent? Fifteen. Now, Fifteen? Yeah, at Stanbridge Hall in, uh, in the Black Country. I mean, uh, what, what, such a beautiful voice. We were talking last night um, about monitors these things here and how did people preserve their voices i mean when when we first came to america in 68 december 68 there were no monitors and my pa amp was used to stop bonzo's bass drum moving down the stage <laughs> <laughs> and, and, uh, that's how old i am and i used to have to maximum treble maximum presence and that was it but vincent was in the same boat 10 years prior to that and he had the most beautiful voice he didn't do all that, mama, ma. He just had this sweet, beautiful, beautiful voice. In those days, it must have been a miracle to preserve that voice. And he was always good. Yeah. He wasn't very happy. You know, he had a rough time, but he was a great, great singer. And for me to be opening the show for a guy like that, I mean, I was just all over the place. And I'm yeah. still really, when I, like, when I saw Pine Top Perkins last night, and, and I sat in the middle of those two guys, Howlin' Wolf's guitarist and Muddy Waters' piano player. And the Golden God. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, I thought, how the bloody hell did I get in here? <laughs> it was quite a thing, really. I mean, uh, so, yeah. I'm a fan of that sort of, that dark blue note. And that was where I went. I kept away from the beat groups. I, I remember the stories about Muddy Waters when he first came to England. Now, when I worked with Alexis Corner, he told me that Muddy was booed off the stage for actually amplifying his guitar. Wow. So, so the, the, great, the general public and the media had decided that it, blues was only pure if it was brought to England with an acoustic, which was ridiculous, really. The fact that it actually ended up in some kind of hallowed environment instead of in a juke joint yeah. where people were actually getting, on, getting down, you know, that was already phony. But uh, it, was, it was great to behold, and, and um, at that time, two German promoters, Lippmann and Rao, um, peddled around Europe a huge blues packet every, every year from 62 to 66, I think. So we were able in provincial England to see Skip James, uh, Sleepy John Estes, Bucker White, so, so, so you're, you're playing a gig, you're doing pretty well, you've got, and, by, and, and of course, I also don't want to underestimate the fact that by 66 or 67, you're, the, Tim Buckley and the Young Bloods and other things, other threads that still we yeah. hear in your music are, are, uh, are coming in. And you're playing in Band of Joy, I guess. And Jimmy Page appears in the back of the room, or so with, just came from the crossroads, or so the myth yeah. goes. Is, I've, we've often heard Paige tell the story of sort of, I couldn't believe this guy was so great and he sang so well and he looked great. I figured he must be a real jerk if nobody already had made, hadn't made a star out of him. Yeah. Um, 
and, and, but in fact, you turned out to be a good guy. So what's your memory of that moment when sort of, here comes, here comes Swing in London, here comes the big time walking into my bar? <laughs> 